Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a tobacco review for you. And the tobacco which I will be reviewing is this. It is GLP's Jackknife Plug. Now, if you've been around the pipe tobacco community for a while, I'm sure you've heard of this blend. You'll hear these third-hand anecdotes from people in hushed tones on forums saying things like, GLP's Jackknife Plug, well, it's some strong stuff. I smoked a bowl once, woke up in the emergency room with a broken arm and hepatitis C. You be careful with that jackknife plug. It's got a reputation kind of like that, but we're gonna see if it really lives up to that reputation. Often when people talk about how uh, full flavored, how strong, how overpowering a blend is, I often kind of think, really? Once I've smoked it, it doesn't seem as strong to me, but we'll see. We'll go through this review. We'll see how it measures up. The blend, as I mentioned, GLP's Jackknife Plug. It is produced by Cornell and Deal, blended by GLP's, produced by Cornell and Deal. It is available at smokingpipes.com. They have the two ounce tin like this for eight eighty or no, nine eighty-six. And there's also an eight ounce tin for thirty-two oh six. Pipes and Cigars has the two ounce tin for nine forty-nine and the eight ounce tin for thirty-one forty-nine. Four Noggins has the ten the ten ounce, the two ounce tin for ten nineteen and the eight ounce for thirty-four fifty. So let's get to the tin description here. GLPs usually has rather wordy descriptions on their tins, so this one is no different. <coughs> Jackknife plug. Dark fired Kentucky leaf and ripe red Virginia tobaccos with their deep earthy flavors are layered on a central core of golden flu cured for a hint of bright sweetness, then pressed and matured in cakes, and finally cut into two ounce blocks Slice it thick and rub it out for a ribbon cut. Thin for a shag or chop it into cubes. The choice is yours. There you go. The blend type, eh, it's hard to say. This is, it contains uh, dark fire Kentucky. It has some flu cured Virginia and some red Virginia. So even though it has two types of Virginias, I think you'd still call it maybe a burly Virginia because I think the Dark Fire Kentucky is sort of the central component of this blend. It's the one that you notice the most when you're smoking it. Um, but then other people will say don't call it a burly because Dark Fire Kentucky is a distinct form of burly. So call it a Kentucky Virginia, a Virginia Kentucky, a burly Virginia. I don't know. It has those things in it. You can call it whatever you want, really. The blend contains, as I just said, Dark Fire Kentucky, red Virginias and bright flu cured Virginias. If we get to the vital stats here, we go to the category of flavoring. In this, I detected none. That's not to say there isn't any, but there is nothing that stuck out to me. So none detected. The cut, as the name would suggest, is a plug. It's a jackknife plug. So let's take a look at that right now. So here we have our tin of GLP's jackknife plug. And no matter, it was empty anyway. Here we have our jar of GLP's jackknife plug. Because the moisture content was pretty much perfect in the plug when I opened it, I put it in this jar pretty darn quick. Now for those of you who are maybe new to pipe smoking, and don't have a lot of experience with the plug, you might buy this tobacco, look inside and you'll find that. And you'll say, what the heck am I supposed to do with this? Well, this is, as the name of the tobacco would suggest, a plug. And what you do with the plug, as the name also suggests, is use a knife to cut off some tobacco. This is jackknife plug, after all. This is a jackknife. This is what I do to prepare my plugs. I usually cut them very thinly. I cut a nice, thin slice. Ugh, and this is about... I don't know, a sixteenth, maybe an eighth, not quite an eighth, sixteenth of an inch thick. Can't talk while cutting. There we go. And then I like to really rub it out nice and fine. That's just my preference. Some people like to cut more coarse chunks. Some people like to cut um, the plug actually into little cubes, but I prefer a nice, almost shag cut like this, where I cut it really thin and then rub it out, and that's just perfect. So we have our 
Kentucky in there, dark fire Kentucky. We have our red Virginia, and then we have our brights, our flu cured Virginias. Quite lovely, nicely melded together. And with that plug form of the tobacco, everything is pressed. So everything kind of, it marries the flavors a little more than just your, your typical um, uh, ribbon cut mix that you would get. So now this GLP's jackknife plug is ready to smoke. And there you have it. Now back to the vital stats. The strength on this one, I'm gonna call medium strong on this. Probably more on the strong side than the medium side. That is my personal opinion on this. You might think that it is very, very strong, but remember the strength category is separate from the nicotine level here. This is just the overall impression it gives you. Is this a mild blend or is it a strong blend? To me, it's medium, medium strong. The taste on this one, it's full flavored, but that's full flavored for a Kentucky Virginia blend. It's different than what you would get from a, a really heavy Latakia blend, but it's it's to me a very full flavored blend. The nicotine level on this, I dithered back and forth because actually the first few times I ever smoked this, and I've been smoking this off and on for quite some time, um, it's a blend that I'm pretty familiar with. When I first smoked it, I didn't really get much out of it, but then there were times when I really got a heavy nicotine kick, that kind of closed up throat thing and slight lightheaded action. Um, I'm gonna call it medium high, more probably on the high side than the medium side. For people who are newbies, for people who are not very experienced with nicotine, with smoking pipe tobacco, this might put you on your ass, so be careful. For someone who has a lot of experience, like me, um, I'm gonna call it medium high because there are still times when I can smoke this and I can feel a little loopy. So be careful. If you're new to pipe smoking, this could really affect you in terms of nicotine content. Um, the moisture from the tin, this particular tin was Goldilocks. It was perfect as soon as I opened it, but in uh, the various other tins I've had of this, it is varied between sort of moist towelette and even drowned rat. So most of the time I got it, it was a little bit moist, but I'm just gonna call it Goldilocks because I'm reviewing this tin and this tin was Goldilocks. And the packaging, as I mentioned, two ounce tin like this and also an eight ounce tin is available. Speaking of tins, let's get to the tin note or in this case, the jar note because it has been decanted into a jar. I will shove my nose in here right now. Mmm. This is a slappy in the face tobacco smell. It's a pretty strong smelling tobacco. And it smells like tobacco. I say that a lot for Virginia blends sometimes. They just smell to me like the very stereotypical tobacco smell. This has, it's slightly altered because of the Dark Fire Kentucky. Um, and there's a very savory sort of profile to this smell. It's kind of like, I get tobacco and steak sauce, or I guess brown sauce as you would call it in the UK. But very savory and pretty strong. The uh, room note on this, I'm gonna say it's a pretty strong room note, maybe less tolerable than some of the lighter kind of sweeter Virginia blends. Um, there's a little slight tinge of cigarettiness to this, but not very much, it's not as much as some like just straight burly blends. So for people who are not fans of pipe smoke in general, this probably isn't gonna make you any friends, but in my opinion, it's tolerable, probably a little heavier and a little uh, more noticeable than some of the other blends I might've reviewed in the past. If we get to the actual review, I'm just a little over halfway down this bowl here. Let me tamp, and let me light. Whoa, now, just filled this letter. First of all, let's just talk about the mechanics here. Depending on how you prepare your plug, it's gonna smoke and behave a lot differently for you. 
I, as I showed you in the cut video section, I prefer to cut it pretty thin and rub it out pretty fine. So for me, this burns pretty easily, stays lit pretty easily, packs pretty easily, all that good stuff. If you're someone who prefers, prefers a coarser rubbed out uh, style, like if you cut it a little thicker, rub it out a little less, or if you cut it into cubes, it might vary a little bit. You'll probably have more relights. It might be a little bit more difficult to smoke, but some people prefer the flavor they get through that. For me though, it's always burned well and it's behaved pretty well. So if we think about the component tobaccos in here, we have the Dark Fire Kentucky, we have the Red Virginias, and we have the Bright Flu Cured Virginias. And you would think, okay, what are the stereotypes for each of those kinds of tobacco? The Dark Fire Kentucky, you're gonna have that smoky flavor, a little bit of nuttiness, and then there's also a bit of spice that's an interesting addition that Dark Fire brings into a blend. It's not quite the same kind of spicy finish that you get from Perique, but there's definitely a bit of a peppery sort of uh, dash to the blend, I guess. And then with the Red Virginia, it's a little more of an earthy, kind of tangy, a little bit of sweetness in there. And then with the Bright Flu Cured, it's hard to say, you get a little bit of the citrus, a little bit of the grass, but with this blend, even though it contains all those tobaccos, the real star here is the Dark Fire Kentucky. That's the thing that, that's really gonna take center stage. So you get this very smoky, yet very tobacco-y taste um, with a little bit of spice, but then you also get a bit of sweet, a bit of salty, and over everything is this really savory quality to this blend. And then in the background as well, there's a little bit of that creosote taste that I've mentioned before. I think in blends like Dunhill Standard Mixture, um, GLP's Gaslight, I don't think I've reviewed that yet, but that has a little bit of this kind of tar creosote taste that sounds horrible, but actually I really find delightful. A little bit of bitterness in there. And this has a more rich, savory flavor than a lot of the dark-fired Kentucky blends that I've had in the past. I think I mentioned in the... I don't know if it was either in the tin note or the room note, the steak sauce kind of smell or flavor. And it does almost taste as though A1 steak sauce or like HP brown sauce has been poured over this tobacco. It has this really just savory quality to it that I find quite delightful. But it is pretty strong. It is pretty full flavored. It does have a bit of a kick to it. In fact, when smoking this bowl, whenever I do a review, I light my bowl and I start filling out my sheet. I've already had some notes probably from previous sessions with whatever tobacco I might happen to be reviewing, but then I like to have a fresh sheet of paper. I'll fill out all the different vital stats and everything, the blend, the component tobaccos while I'm smoking. And while I was doing that with this tobacco, uh, it was getting a little loopy. And I haven't been smoking much lately. I've had a bit of a summer cold going, so that has something to do with it. My nicotine um, endurance level has gone down or my tolerance level has gone down a bit. But yeah, I definitely got a little lightheaded from this. This is a fairly simple blend, but to me it has a lot going on. Like I said, that smoky, spicy, sweet, salty, savory, all these things kind of going together. If you were unable to get a hold of a tin of this, let's say you couldn't get to the tobacco store, you couldn't order it online, and you wanted to try to best replicate this tobacco blend, let me tell you the ingredients you would need. Find an old leather boot, perhaps in your grandfather's closet. Take the sole of that boot and rip it off and cut it into fine strips. Then over those strips of leather boot, sprinkle a bit of lemon zest. Then take a pepper mill and grind a bit of pepper over top of that. Add some crushed hazelnuts and stir in a bit of molasses. And then also a bit of road tar. Those of you who are into barbecue might know about smoke in a bottle. Add a dash of that as well. Mix it all together and over top of all of that, some A1 steak sauce. And that is as close as you'll be able to come to GLP's jackknife plug. Hmm. I find it delightful. 
not for the faint of heart, probably not an everyday, all day kind of tobacco. To me, this is a special treat that I might have. I do smoke it in the morning sometimes, and that's if you really want to get a pick-me-up. You have a cup of coffee and a bowl of this, and you will be a bit wired for the day ahead. But I highly recommend trying out GLP's Jackknife Plug. If you're a new smoker, you might want to build up your palate and your resistance a little bit to nicotine and just to a full flavor blend. But if you are a veteran and you want to try something interesting, try something new, I highly recommend GLP's Jackknife Plug. One of my favorite GLP's blends, in fact. So thank you so much for watching. This has been my review of GLP's Jackknife Plug. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things.